Yo, Marilyn, how many books do you have for your June TBR? It's not a TBR. I told you it's a P.O.P. pop. And I have 13 books. Aloha and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marilyn, a.k.a. Maya, the Baby Boomer Booktuber. And I know I'm late with my June TBR. <gasps> I mean P.O.P. Pop. I have 13 books, but I'm going to add another one because, well, you can't be too superstitious or I'm not superstitious, but maybe I am a little bit. Um, I'm going to start with uh, a book I don't have yet. It's in the library waiting for me, and it's a book for Pride Month that I read a long, long time ago, but I want to read it again. And it's waiting for me at the library, and it's called Ruby Fruit Jungle. It's a novel by Rita Mae Brown, and it, sh it should be right here. Um, Rita Mae Brown also wrote a lot of mysteries about cats, so uh, you might know her from that uh, from that style of books, that genre of books that she writes. But she also uh, wrote two books about uh, being a lesbian. And what it says here is, Ruby Fruit Jungle is the first novel by Rita Mae Brown, published in 1973. It was remarkable in the day for its explicit portrayal of lesbianism. The novel is a coming-of-age autobiographical account of Brown's youth and emergence as a lesbian author. And I remember I really enjoyed it when I read it way back in the 70s. So um, I think that um, I also want to um, have a person who's close to me read it as well. So um, she also had um, another book to make it 14. I'm not going to have it in the notes, but it's called Venus Envy that I just heard about. So that should make my pile to 14. So Rita Mae Brown for Pride Month. Um, I have two books that have to go back to the library, and I didn't get to read them yet. Um, and one of them is pretty famous. It's Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. It's a beautiful cover, by the way. Um, it's a very handsome boy with a feather over his eyes. And um, it's a chilly, it's a, it says it's an account of the plague, a novel of the plague. And um, a blurb here says it's a thing of shimmering wonder. And um, I heard, it, heard about it all over BookTube. My librarian said I would like it. But I wasn't in the mood this month, I had so many books from my mail haul that I didn't get to it. So I'm going to bring it back and then order it again from the library. And um, I, am, I did read a few pages, and I see the writing is just beautiful. The other book that has to go back and I didn't get to read is also one I really want to read. It's called Dusk, Night, Dawn on Revival and Courage by Anne Lamott. Now, Anne Lamott is... Uh, a very prolific writer. She wrote a lot of books. I think she wrote Bird by Bird, a book that I is like my writing Bible. And um, she's also quite spiritual. So let me uh, just tell you a little bit. Um, it says, from the best-selling author of Help, Thanks, Wow, comes an inspiring guide to restoring hope and joy in our lives. How can we recapture the confidence we once had as we stumbled through the dark times that seem increasingly bleak? How can we cope as bad news piles up around us? Where, Anne Lamott asks, do we start to get our world and joy and hope and our faith in life itself back? With our sore feet, hearing loss, stiff fingers, poor digestion, stunned minds, and broken heart. In dusk, Night, Dawn, Lamont shows us the intimate and individual ways we can adopt to move through life's dark places and toward the light of hope that still burns in all of us. I'm not going to read any more of this. Um, there is a quote in the back that says, Yes, these are times of great illness and distress, yet the center may just hold. 
And um, after what we went through with um, our plague, um, coronavirus, um, I think this is a, a wonderful nonfiction that I might want to buy, to own, because um, Anne Lamott is a very wise author. So those are the two that I have to bring back to the library. Um, there's another book that I want to show you um, that um, may, I don't think it's on booktube at all, and it's called Freckled, A Memoir of Growing Up Wild in Hawaii by T.W. Neal. T.W. Neal is the nonfiction writing name for USA Today best-selling award-winning author Toby Neal. And um, this book, I went through it a little bit, but I, uh, I'm going to read it this month, hopefully. It's, uh, it's very close to my heart because I lived in Kauai, which um, this is about. I wasn't there in 1965. Um, and there's a picture of, uh, I was going to say there's a picture of her. There's a lot of pictures in it. Uh, there's a lot of photos in it for her. And it says, for fans of The Glass Castle and Educated, comes mystery author Toby Neal, a personal story of surviving a wild childhood in paradise. Um, I didn't like Educated or Glass Castle, but um, a lot of blurbs also have comp titles that um, don't necessarily mean that they're going to be an exact replica or even similar to the books that they uh, speak about. So uh, what is it about? Born in 1965 to hippie surfer parents, who just want to ride waves, use substances, and hide from society, red-headed Toby grows up as one of only a few hundred Caucasian Haole people on the rugged, beautiful north shore of Kauai, Hawaii. I wish I can slow down time, turn every moment to honey, and watch it drip by. Told from the immersive first-person view of a child experiencing turbulent times as they occur, Freckle will take you on a journey as Toby catches an octopus with her bare hands to feed the family and makes money by selling magic mushrooms to a drug dealer, living in tents and off the land without electricity or communication with the outside world. Toby escapes into reading to deal with racial harassment and indifferent parenting. Despite the hardships and deprivations of life on Kauai, they return again and again to an island whose hold on them is more po powerful than any drug. Um, from what I get, the father is, uh, there might, might also be some child abuse in this book, from what I read from the beginning. And um, I lived on Kauai. I didn't live in a tent. I lived there for five years, and it is indeed a magical island that can grip you. Um, I also knew people who did live on the North Shore without, a ho without homes and... Um, when I was there in the, well, I was in Hawaii in 78, but I didn't get to Kauai until uh, maybe 1990. And um, it still was a paradise then. This is, be, uh, I think it was before one of the hurricanes and, af and after one of them. Uh, we had two big hurricanes in Hawaii since I've been here. Um, one was Aniki and one was, and Hurricane Eva in 1982. Um, I was here on on Oahu during Eva, and it was really a scary time. Um, I was on the mainland during Hurricane Iniki. But, um, yeah, so Hurricane Iniki, uh, six people perished, and um, the whole island was, like, torn up. And uh, a lot of people uh, lost their homes and businesses and... Uh, it took a while to get back to where they were, um, but it had a, uh, something good about it happened. It was growing too fast. The local people thought that this tore the land back to its essence, and it start, everything started growing fresh again. But of course, you know, any, any a disaster that has people perishing is not good. Um, I'm looking forward to it. This is quite a long memoir, and I'm hoping that um, it's not what they call self-indulgent or, um, you know, too, you know, daddy dearest in this case. But um, I got good uh, 
it had good reviews and uh, also, like I said, my librarian recommended it. For other recommendations, another booktuber recommended uh, a murder mystery called Class Reunions Are Murder by Libby Klein. And um, I'm going to try to read this because it looks like a fast read. So I'll let you know at the end of the month how that went. Um, something happened this month that's uh, really different for me. Um, we have a little free library um, that just opened in a phone booth, an old-fashioned phone booth near our library. And um, I, I, I got some middle grade novels. And one is Diary of a Wimpy Kid by Jeff Kinney and um, The Ugly Truth. This, this, I think, is the first novel. And uh, The Ugly Truth, uh, is this is I don't know how many books are in the um, the series, but um, <laughs> I've been really enjoying this, and I I'm not one to read middle grade, and my partner also had a few it's a uh, few laughs at this. Um, it's about a kid who has a lot of really funny uh, observations about school. Um, it's in cartoons, by the way. And one says, I'll be famous one day, but for now I'm stuck in middle school with a bunch of morons. And he has himself and then the morons are, <laughs> are uh, sketched. So um, I'm, I think I'm really going to read this. Maybe I'll read a few pages um, each night. So that's my middle grade. And it's the first middle grade that I've uh, shown on my channel. Okay, now we get to some others. Um, Kate Howe is doing a mystery uh, readathon this month of um, Miss Pym Disposes by um, Josephine Tay, who I really um, work, I was collecting her books because I thought she was, and I still think she is, um, very, an excellent mystery writer, different than Agatha Christie. Uh, she's more of a, uh, the characterizations are more important than the actual um, crime in her books and the story. Um, but I have to say I'm a little bit, I did read this, and I'm a little bit disappointed that um, there are some racist things that were really not pleasant to read. And um, even though I talked about Agatha Christie having some racist um, characters who spoke, um, you know, that spoke racist, uh, racism from their mouths. They were evil characters. In this case, I just got the impression that those thoughts were more, uh, from the author. And I, I really didn't like that. So, um, the story itself, I'll get more into when I do my wrap up. But, um, yeah, I was a little disappointed. The cover is gorgeous, though. It really uh, shows Miss Pym. And uh, she's very short. She wears high heels. And this is a, a dark academia. So if you're into that, and it also has gy uh, gymnastics in it. I'm really, really into watching, not doing gymnastics. So if, if that's your thing, you're going to really like this despite the, um, the bad parts that I just told you about. Um, the next book is uh, also, it's a thriller, mystery thriller, Watch Her by Edwin Hill. And um, I did, I might have to abandon this book or DNF it because um, I read a couple of chapters and it takes so long for him to get to the setup that I just didn't care about the people anymore. So I'm not sure if I'm going to go on with Edwin Hill. But he's, uh, in case that you like him, um, it's about Hester Thurbs Thursby returns to Edwin Hill's complex psychological thriller about a powerful Boston family desperate to keep their darkest secrets from coming to light. And I guess that's probably why I didn't like it. Uh, from what I read of it, because I'm not really interested in powerful people and the secrets they keep. I'm more interested in ordinary people who have 
more interesting stories to tell, even if there's, it's supposed to get really exciting toward the end, you know, but I don't think I'm going to finish it. On a different vein, um, the, these books I really enjoyed, and um, I got them from uh, watching YouTube, from watching BookTube, and they're from Miss Reed, and one is called Mrs. Pringle. I mean, just look at this uh, cover. I mean, Mrs. Pringle is not a nice person, but uh, she appears in all of uh, Miss Reed's books. And Miss Reed uh, is, re is actually Mrs. Doris Saint, who draws on her own memories of living and teaching in a small English village for the Fair Acre and Thrush Green novels. And the other one I read was Changes at Fair Acre. So I read sort of one from the beginning and one toward the end of this series. And uh, really, you don't have to um, read it from beginning to end. They're very quiet um, books, but they have a lot of wisdom in them. And they're not mysteries. They're more like cozy literary fictions. And uh, I enjoyed them. They're, they're really, there's, people say palate cleansers. I don't know if I really believe in palate cleansers, but I enjoyed reading this before I went to bed. It gave me a nice feeling. People were really good in this book, good people. And uh, maybe that's not um, very realistic, but I like to think that there are good people in the world because I know there are, and there always were. So if you want to uh, learn about more about what it's like to live in a little village, um, Miss Reed, she doesn't come from that village, but she stays there and she becomes part of the community. So that's what these books are about. Then I picked up... Um, I had a little haul um, from uh, Book Off, and I picked up a few books, some of which I'm not going to show you today because they're part of uh, Jane Austen July. But um, I picked up Scribblers on the Roof, which, I mean, the title just caught me. Uh, contemporary uh, fiction, Jewish fiction. I read a few stories already, and I'm not really into short stories. Um, but a few I didn't like, and I was almost going to put this down, I mean, because I really didn't like them, and then I read a few that I really liked. And that's, uh, they're not connected short stories, but they're short stories. Now, for my last book, <laughs> I have a big one, Paranese. No, not by Susanna Clark. I was surprised that I got Piranesi so fast from my library. But it turned out not to be the Piranesi that's all over book two. It's the Piranesi by Jonathan Scott that talks about, it's a big one, by the way, and um, I'm going to show you some pictures, but it is um, when he died in 1778, not even his critics, and in the course of his stormy life, there were many, disputed Piranesi's title of the Rembrandt of the Rooms. In his etchings, the sheltered imagination of ancient Rome was transformed into an intense and personal evocation of antiquity that became integral component of the romantic imagination and one that still influences it today. And um, if you look at the back cover, it's, it's, it's a very, it, it reminds me of a very um, <laughs> house that looks very um, confusing and hectic. And um, I think this has something to do with Piranesi, the, the, the fantasy book. But what I wanted to tell you was that it, it turned out to be a lucky mistake because my partner sketches and um, he was really impressed with the photos. I mean, this is a, a book about Piranesi's life and um, there are beautiful photos in this book. 
um, and he's been sketching them. So it's been a very lucky, uh, happy uh, mistake. And I don't know if I'm going to read the whole story, but I'm definitely going to look at the, the pictures, and I won't be able to get the other Piranesi for a long time. So um, this did make me interested in reading the fantasy novel uh, by the same name. So this one is, by, like I said, by Jonathan Scott. It's a big one, and if you like art, if you like etchings, if you like Roman runes and, and uh, beautiful sketches, I suggest that you pick this up. Well, that's my late June 2021 pop. I don't know how many of these possibilities that I'm going to get to read, but I hope that your June reading has been very successful. I've read a lot of books this, this month, and um, some of these are that I read are here. Some of these I won't get to, and some of these I'm going to reorder, like Hamnet and Dusk Night Dawn. So if you like this channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate all the comments that I've gotten um, on my videos. So until we meet again, my friends, aloha oi.